I called Heath and I said, you know, this is what's happening. They're, they're putting together the next Batman film and um, the Joker's gonna be the villain and, or, you know, is out of interest. And I remember him, you know, it was like, there was no pause. It was like, absolutely, I want that. How do I, you know, what do we do? I'll get on a plane, I'll fly out. I wanna meet with Chris, you know. Can you get me in a room with Chris Nolan? I'd already seen this world he'd created in uh, Batman Begins. And so I knew there was an opportunity for a new version of the Joker. And that excited me. And I also knew instantly what to do. So we had about a month, roughly two months, he had already started to occupy the character. I locked myself away for six weeks in a room and I kind of came up with this creep. Walk around like a, a madman in finding posture, finding stance. Finding his voice is very important because when you find the voice, you find the, the breath within the voice. It's like, man, the Joker, though. Jack Nicholson did the Joker, man. I said, how, how do you tackle that? Like, without just doing a version of Jack? I mean, how do you even talk or laugh or... I'm sitting there walking, just thinking, and I suddenly hear... Do you want to know how I got these scars? I'm like, I look at him and he's kind of walking, holding his shirt. He's like, my daddy was a drinker and a fiend. And he gives me this look and I, man, goosebumps, chills run down me. And he does that little monologue for me. Why so serious? He finishes. I was just holy. And I jump in the street, woo, yell it out. I'm punching him in the chest. And he's like, don't tell anyone. <laughs> he turns to me. And he says, why so serious? He comes at me with the knife. Why so serious? He sticks the blade in my mouth. Let's put a smile on that face. And... Why so serious? When we were shooting the uh, scene, in uh, where he comes into the party. There was a crowd that side of the camera and this side of the camera. It was a very large crowd, so he didn't expect it to be so big. He said, this feels like walking onto a stage. I wasn't prepared for so many people. How do I play this? And I said, well, well, you're a psychopath. So they're, they're your toys. <laughs> you play with your toys. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are tonight's entertainment. I only have one question. Where is Harvey Dent? You know where Harvey is? Do you know who he is? That was another trademark of the actor that Heath had become. He was able to chuck his vanity, and I think his conception of the Joker did show him kind of warts and all. And he did it on his own in the makeup trailer, and it was very simple. All it was is just like a wash of white pancake makeup and some smear of red lips. The prosthetics came up onto the lip and feathered onto the lip, so it was almost halfway into the mouth. And of course, when you speak, the feathering of the prosthetics became loosened. The last thing he's wanted to do is to go back and spend another 20 minutes or half an hour trying to get the, the lips glued back again. <laughs> so he, he, licked, he licked his lips a lot. <laughs> and then slowly that became a part of the character. He knew that he had something that was amazing. He put all this work into it and he was actually enjoying the work. Everyone, every sound technician, every producer was floored by what he was doing in The Dark Knight. People would be scurrying up to screens, trying to get glimpses on set, just because they knew when he was on, it was on. He felt for the first time as an actor that he was like, I'm untouchable. Like, I'm, every scene I do with any other actor, it doesn't matter how amazing they are, I'm controlling and leading these scenes. He was so confident and he was so proud of that role. He was really excited for that film to come out. He was, it was the first time I'd heard him in a long time being excited about like this role I've, I've nailed. You've changed things forever. And why do you want to kill me? <laughs> I don't, don't want to 
kill you? What would I do without you? Go back to ripping off mob dealers? No, 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 you, you complete me. You're garbage, you kills for money. Don't talk like one of them, you're not. Even if you'd like to be. To them, you're just a freak, like me. When he wasn't working, he would come to set and observe and watch Chris because he was so enamored with you know, Chris as a director and, and wanted to learn as much as he could about what he was building and what he was doing. A lot of people like to think that it was a strenuous process for him, but he would come off the set and we'd, we'd chat and we'd have a laugh and joke and we had more fun than, than, was, um, than was respectable <laughs> for, for hardworking artists. <laughs> It was the most fun I've had with a character, um, hands down. Creatively, it was, it was just, um, it was too good to be true. was the most alive human. And if it wasn't on the edge, it didn't interest him. There were always cameras around, a video camera or a Polaroid camera or the film camera. That's the only way I think of him, with the camera in the hand. <laughs> he was always a director. Acting was just a way to get there. Before Brokeback Mountain came out, it would have been unthinkable to have a romantic tragedy involving two gay cowboys. This is one of the biggest heartthrobs on earth taking on that character. That's an artist. He kind of almost pulled out of every movie he ever ended up doing. He wanted fame, and then when he got it, he didn't want it. I'm not going to be that guy and I'll show you. Oh, nice shot, man, nice shot. Even as a supporting actor, he will steal the whole show. That's the power of Heath Ledger. Here's our entry fees, now where's our trophies? <laughs> this is like taking it to the next level, like you're gonna be nominated for this, I'm telling you right now, and he, he just smiled. You will. 